Hi guys, it's about quarter to ten, and uh, we are stopped to gas up at Walmart because we are going downstate today. Um, for obvious reasons, I don't tell you our plans the day before. <laughs> but, um, yeah, apparently my stepmom's house, uh, her kids have accepted a cash offer on it, and, but the lady wanted one week occupancy. And there's still a bunch of stuff down there for my sister and I. So yesterday, Gwen went down and took a load of stuff. And today, she couldn't go today and we couldn't go yesterday. So, And today, we're going down. It's about 180 miles each way. But that's why we needed to get our car back. Because um, it's the only one probably that's, that, well, it's the most comfortable trip. And I wouldn't want to pay for six miles per gallon for the motor home. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's where we're on our way to. So we're filling up. I had a quarter chain. I told I told uh, Brandy not to put gas in my car while she was gone because I keep track of all my I keep track of all my mileage and my gas every time I go somewhere. So yeah, I keep track of all, every every time we get gas, I keep track of the mileage. My dad told me always to do this because it can be the first indicator that something is going wrong in your engine. So I do. I, I always have and probably always will. I had one car that, um, actually it was a pickup truck. It was a half ton, big old, or no, three quarter ton, big old Dodge black pickup truck. And the gas gauge didn't work, but it had a nice black dashboard, so I just kept a piece of chalk. And I wrote it on the dashboard every time. Every time I got gas and I figured out the mileage, then I'd erase it the next time I'd write it on. And then um, it would also keep track when I, saw I'd go see it, when I saw I had gone enough miles that I'd better get more gas. <laughs> so that was my gas gauge. I wouldn't do that in this car, though. That was way back in the day when I worked at the racetracks. All right, guys. I want to go. Mm -hmm. Pete will be back in a minute, and I gotta enter my data into my. So I will see you guys later. Bye. Hi, guys. We stopped at Ponderosa and Bay City for lunch. There's my salad, beets. I got mushrooms, broccoli, eggs. I don't know what all. Lots of greens. There's the rest of it: potato salad, roasted chicken, and a piece of barbecued ribs. We stopped at a place called, I wanted Mexican food, I can't think what it's called. I wanted Mexican food because we get Chinese all the time, or American. So we stopped here on our way home, this is Saginaw, and uh, so far I like it really well. Look at all the pretty colors, I love all these colors. Anyway, I give you these chips to fill you up so you can't eat your dinner. <laughs> anyway, we're um, I just got a chimichanga. So um, that's it. Everything went well. My stepsister was kind enough to let me uh, walk through the house and do a video before the new people take it over this week. I'll probably talk more about it tonight, but just wanted to show you that we stopped for lunch. We did get to spend a couple hours there with Betsy, her Uncle John, who is Beth's younger brother, um, and Anna, who is Betsy's teenage daughter. She's like 17 or 16. And um, then my stepbrother David came over too. But we were in a little bit of a hurry to get out because I'll talk about that later too when we get home. But meanwhile, we stop for lunch. If I think of it, I'll show you a picture of my lunch. See you guys later. Yeah. Actually, though. 
This is the one on West Branch. But I need another card for my phone and we need I forgot what else. Popcorn. Popcorn. Can't live without popcorn, so it's not as big as I ever saw this building, so we'll see. Oh, we're exhausted guys. See you later. Bye. This is the Walmart West Branch. We don't have a view like this from our Walmart. <laughs> I love that happy face water tower up there. There we go. See the happy face? That's West Branch. You can see it from the expressway. I-75. Okay, we're about 30 to 35 minutes from home. So, just want to get there now. I'll see you guys later. Hi guys, we're home. It's about quarter to nine. We got home, we put the stuff away, we got the dogs out, let the dogs and the cat out for a while. I took care of the birds. Pete fed the dogs, they came in and ate. I fed the cat, he came in and ate. What a long day, guys. What a long day. It was very emotional, too. Very, very emotional. But it was a great day, and I was happy to be with my step family and one of my fears is that I won't see him anymore, you know. Some of you know I am planning a trip to California, so I know I, one of my steps is out there. I can't say exactly when, but I know it's coming. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I have other friends there too, so. Anyway, we're home. Car's still loaded down. We're too exhausted to empty it tonight. Pharaoh has a vet appointment in the morning. We were about halfway down there this morning. Well, not quite halfway, probably about a third of the way. When the nursing home called, Pete took the call because I was driving. And um, apparently my mom's having real difficulties and she's starting to abuse the staff. So they had to send her, call an ambulance and send her to the hospital. Well. I wanted to send her to Grayling. Grayling almost killed her. I didn't want her to go there. Um, n really, most hospitals are not at all familiar with the type of dementia she has. And if you give somebody with LBD some of the most common drugs that you give to Alzheimer's patients, you can literally kill them. Literally kill them. Which is what they did to my mom and Grayling because they wouldn't listen to me because the doctor there said dementia is dementia. Anyway, so she was pulled from there and sent up to Traverse City where she, they kind of flushed her out, detoxed her, whatever. And um, anyway, so there's a hospital about an hour south, uh, Alma which they're familiar, and I wanted her to go there, but they only had two choices, West Branch. It is a hospital, but, like, it's a real small hospital, and they don't really do anything, but I wouldn't let them send her to Grayling, so they sent her to West Branch, so, but I knew nobody would know about LBD there either, so they made sure that it was written down, no Haldol, no Ativan, um, and call her daughter before you do anything, but they never called me, so... We were down at my dad and stepmom's house. That was the house my mom and dad built together. We moved there when I was a teenager. Uh, and then um, after my mom and dad split up, my dad bought out my mom's half of the house or whatever. And he lived there. And um, then when he married Bev, you know, she moved in there. And, of course, it's been all redone and everything. It's fully their house. But my stepsister, Betsy, has been working diligently my her uncle Bev's brother has been working with Betsy and they've been working ever since Bev died the end of February trying to get stuff out and now they're down to the wire and so anyway um we got a car full <laughs> um and Gwen took a truck full home yesterday we cut her our visit short a little bit because I was anxious to get up to West Branch to the hospital where my mom is now, Bev's house it was 170 miles southeast. West Branch is on the way back, but it's only like 26 miles from our house. 
so it was most of the way back. So I really wanted to get Phoebe. She just saw Farrell go by out of the corner of her eye, I think. Anyway, so West Branch, um, I wanted to get there quickly before they did anything because anybody with LBD really needs an advocate. And they need an advocate that knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing, and knows about LBD because most doctors don't. So I wanted to hurry up and get back to West Branch. Well, thankfully, Pete called the nursing home because we hadn't heard anything and it had been like four hours, four and a half. So Pete called the nursing home and they said, oh, they found nothing wrong with her, so they're sending her back. Which I, that's better than keeping her there and drugging her, obviously. So tomorrow I'm going to call the social worker there who has known my mom from day one. And she knows how to get things done and I'm going to ask her I think it's probably time my mother needs a med adjustment it's been several years and they will do it down in Alma which is south of us about 60 65 miles I'll call in a little while and see how she's doing so um, I'm gonna go um, it's now 10 to 9. I really want to be in bed by 10. Really need a good night's sleep tonight. So I want to get this done and get in bed and, you know, get a, be rested for the start of my week. It's hot this weekend. It was hotter downstate. So it's going to be a bear tomorrow with bug calls. And I won't have feet here. So at least not in the morning to refill my water and do all the things. Go to the bathroom for me. <laughs> Call the things he does for me while I'm working, when I'm really busy. Now it'll be all right. So, Sarah needs to get checked out again. A checkup. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. So, I hope you all have a marvelous Monday. I hope you all get a good rest tonight so you can start your week rested and zoom through the whole week until we get to the next weekend. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care. God bless and good night.